So Jack Kornfield, the beloved teacher and author, many of you know, he's one of the founders um, and, and a regular teacher at Spirit Rock, not too far from us. He tells a story about when he was a seventh grade teacher about this particular student. Shay was one of his, his students, and, and he said that she was his most difficult student, that she couldn't even follow the most basic of directions, like stay in your seat or raise your hand when you have a question, you know. It's not that she couldn't, she wouldn't. <laughs> and so he said that we were always jockeying for who's going to control the classroom, me or Shay, you know. And he tried everything he knew to try. He tried incentives. He tried consequences. He called her home every week, but no one ever answered. He learned that she was being raised by her older sister. He was just at his wit's end, so he went to the school counselor and he told the school counselor everything he tried. And the school counselor said, we can have her transferred. You've done your due diligence. We'll have her transferred to another classroom. And he said, but I can't do that. She's my student. And so he shared that in the teacher's lounge. And the teachers were <laughs> very, very grateful um, that he was willing to, to keep this student. So he said it was the last day of seventh grade. And Shea scurried out of the classroom ahead of the other students, and the classroom was now empty. And he was sitting there contemplating his failures, the ways that he had not really served this child. And she came back in. And she said, I, I couldn't think of anything to give you. This is the only thing I could think of. And she handed him this slightly misshapen bowl, the kind he said that kids make in art class. And he turned it over, and it had her initials etched in it. And she said, Thanks for trying to like me. And then she left. And he said he just sat there with that bowl. And he said he went on to be a school principal and a school superintendent. And everywhere he was, in every office he was in, at every desk, he always had that misshapen bowl with Shay's initials on the back and the remembrance of, thanks for trying to like me. If we can offer an olive branch, you know, if we can offer somebody a patch of blue sky, somebody who's darkened in their hearts or disappointed by life, crushed by lack of disappointment, if we can be the ones who say, I'll take that high road of kindness, I'll commit to kindness in every situation without knowing what a person's circumstances are, I'll still be the presence of God. I'll still be the presence of kindness. What a world we can make by each of us making that kind of commitment. Will we keep it every time? Of course not. We're going to have our times when it just doesn't show up for us in that way because we're going through our own stuff. But if we make the commitment, we come back to it time and time again, like anything we practice, and we can be more effective at being kind and kind to ourselves, by the way in the process. So kindness is really, I think, something for all of us to aspire to.